this is Laborte, and it is so nice to have you here. These are the paints you need. This week the guys on Patreon voted for the undead mob. Painting undead is really close to Papa Laborte's heart. You see, when Papa Laborte got into mini painting he was really into zombie side. I remember dearly while I painted all the heroes and abominations for the Green Horde version of the game. So this time we are batch painting the undead for Massive Darkness 2. I really like these sculpts. They are angry little fat men with decaying flesh and blessed with some nice blisters throughout their body. I don't really prefer the typos of the leader, but I really like that his guts spilling out from his armor like little baby hands crawling out from a dumpster. As you see, I primed the undead guys black. Now, our first layer will be Night Quester Flash. You see, my approach to paint a really nice and disturbing dead skin this time is to start it like you would paint a normal human skin. Remember, these guys once were alive. Leave the extreme shadows black, like under his man boobs and bottom part of the arms. Use two thin coats to have a nice and opaque layer. Now glaze over to smooth out the layers by adding some water or glaze medium to the Night Quester flesh. Start the brass stock in the dark area and end it in the bright part. Now add some KDM flesh tone to the mix. See, it's the same way you would do a regular human skin. Good old KDM flesh tone. You can go wrong with that. Place your highlights on the shoulders, nose, cheeks, forehead chest and upper part of the belly and the arms. Don't worry about the blisters yet. Just paint over them like they are not even there, because you would waste so much time trying to paint around them. As you see my paint is kind of thin, more of a heavy glaze consistency, so I go back to parts a couple of times to increase the opacity. This thin damp paint will also help me smoothing out the difference between the current and the previous layer. Now it's glazing time with the same method we did in the previous step. And this is where the fun begins. Painting healthy human skin is fun of its own. But zombie skin? Oh dear good old granny's butt It's so much more interesting. To me at least. So we add some necrotic flesh to our KDM flesh tone. And all of a sudden you can tell that our little guys start to look a bit Pale. Is everything alright little guy? Of course not because you are dead. But don't worry this is just the beginning. Gradually decrease the highlight area and add some texture to the skin with small dots. Or you can call this stippling if you like. This will help greatly with blending. With this layer we are basically preparing for the next highlight color. And you guessed it right, it's glazing time again. Don't paint over the shadows, only blend in our new layer with the previous one or I will slap on your tiny hand. If you guessed that we are going to use pure necrotic flesh for the next highlight, you are pretty smart, so continue with the stippling and let's start to admire our process. It start to look nice and dead, isn't it? It will look more dead, don't worry. If you look at a dead body, on a painting. It has a lot of fun discolorations like purple and yellow and red and green. It's like a rainbow. Ok, blend in our new layer with some glazing as well. Even one coat of glaze will be fine, but I'll leave it up to you how smooth you want it. And uh, remember, you need to do this six more times. Ok, let that sink in. So. It takes a bit of time, okay? Okay. But you are patient and persistent and Papa Laborde believes in you. So you can do it without a problem. You guys, this part is pure joy. Glaze in some violet ink into the recesses and shadowy parts. Start the brush stroke in the mid-tones and end it in the dark. This will give our undead guy a nice purple hue over his skin, 
and as you can see our dead skin effect starting to come alive. Right alive, but it's dead so it makes no sense. But if you glaze the violet color over the bright highlights, I will slap on your tiny hand. For our final highlight for the skin, we use ice yellow. Use stippling like there is no tomorrow. It will give us a little yellow hue which will complement our purple shadows greatly. Tiny dots over tiny areas is the key. We have a nice foundation for the highlights to guide your tiny hands at this part. Make more space between the dots where you want to end the transition between the colors so you can blend it in more easily. Now glaze over the ice yellow with one or two layers to have a smooth transition. Blister time! Cover them with some acid dessert. With this color you can tell that those lovely little packages on his skin is filled with some good stuff. And you can't help but stick a straw in it and just... Mm. And guys if you have any questions just leave a comment down below. Now to make them look a bit infected we glaze some red ink over them. Use a consistency that will flow over his blisters and set around them so it will have some nice definition. Steady hands because you don't want to stain the rest of the skin with red, okay? Okay. Or you may want to experience with some red hue on your tiny hands as well, it's up to you. Then add some ice yellow to the Zamesi desert and highlight the upper part of the blisters. With ice yellow, we desaturate our yellow, so it will look like some prime creamy goodness that we would love to chew on all day until its warm content burst into our mouths. So nice. Lastly, give them a small dot of white grey, so they will receive the proper shininess they deserve. With that, our skin is done. Do you like how it turned out? Then like the video and subscribe to Papa Labort. Thank you. I used ice yellow for the eyes and gave them a thin coat of red ink and of course black for the pupils. Try to make small pupils to have a crazy eye effect. For the inside of the mouth and for the vomit that flows on his chest like Renis meets you, I used Va Flash. I add some mood green to the Va Flash to increase the contrast. The reason I'm doing the mouth and the teeth with the same color as the goo, it's because if something that green would come out from Sanvao's mouth, that would be definitely tint his teeth and tongue so it would create a more realistic look. I use pure mood green to pick out the teeth and some parts of the tongue and to increase the shiny jello effect on the vomit. To increase the contrast, I add some ice yellow to the mood green and continue the process. Now with ice yellow I create tiny dots to have some glint in the jelly. Now it's time for the skirt. I use Nagarot Knight in base layer consistency. No Mickey Mouse here. Then highlight it with Xerel's purple. Go around the edges of the skirt to make it a bit more interesting. But don't worry about the highlight placements. We don't want to make this part stand out. Lastly I add some Cacophony purple for the brightest highlight. Tiny dots and lines to have a weary look. I use a heavy glaze consistency for the stippling and the glazing as well. Have some fun with it. It doesn't matter if your lines are not the sharpest. Zombies usually don't have nice clothes anyway. To reinforce that thought, apply some Agrax Earth Shade on the skirt, but not all over it. We are not shading, we are staining. Try to create stains and you can have more at the end of the skirt because that part would act like a mop uh, sweeping all the dirt all day. For all metal parts I use gunmetal. Cover every chain and armor panel and his spear or uh, halberd. For the leather patches and sword sheets use Stondia brown and highlight it with Baneblade brown. This desaturated brown will be fine for these details and remember we need to do this six more Times. So yeah, apart from the skin we try to do simple things to save some time. Then darken the metal parts with a wash of Nulnoil followed by a wash of Agrax 
Earth Shades, so it will also make it a bit dirty and if someone doesn't care about his skin, and this guy definitely don't care about his skin, then he probably don't care about his armor or weapons either. I mean, probably you won't care about a lot of things if you are dead. That's just how it is. Lastly, I add some dry rust to the armor and weapons. If you don't have this paint, add some matte medium to an orangish brown color. This will dry really matte, so it will create a nice rust effect. Build it up in thin coats and try to aim it where rust would naturally appear. Next to the rivets and to the crevices where water or decaying body fluids would go. With all that, your undead soldiers are done, and yet we have a leader for them. And the leader has some guts to spill. So cover it with Baraknar Burgundy. Then add some sunny skin tone to increase the contrast. And for the last highlight, add some more sunny skin tone to the mix. This will make those goods shiny and a joy to look at. So guys, the undead is ready to give a hard time to your heroes accompanied by some terrible smell. Thank you for joining me on this little painting adventure. If you want to vote on the next minute that Papa Labort should make a video about, you can do that on Patreon and you will also get early access to these video tutorials. Also, huge thanks to my Patreons who choose to support these kind of videos. With a special shout out to Jonathan! If you like the video, please give it a like, leave a nice comment and subscribe to the channel. Now, I hope the rest of your day will be as smooth as the crannies. Bye.